student-led Section 504 accommodation planning meetings. So why is it important for a student to lead their Section 504 accommodation plan meeting? Um, one, this meeting's about them. It gives them a voice and they can make decisions that will affect their own lives and their own education. The meeting gives them a chance to practice social advocacy and communication skills that they'll need in the future, especially if they want to go to a post-secondary um, institution, university, or college. They will be the ones that have to advocate for themselves, and this gives them the practice to do so. It also helps them be a part of developing their goals and accommodations and helps them reach their goals. And when they have the opportunity to do that, students are also maybe more successful at completing their goals in their education. The other thing it does too is it gives them an opportunity to understand their own disability because that is something else they'll have to express if they choose to do post-secondary education. So it definitely takes a team to collaborate and ensure that a student-led 504 meeting is successful. So if this is something you would like your your child to try then you would need to communicate with the principal or the Section 504 monitoring officer to express that desire for the student to begin to lead their own 504 meetings. The student will have to create a plan with you and the team to begin planning for them to lead their own 504 plans. Um, the school and parents together can develop a script for the student to follow while they're learning how to lead a meeting and to advocate for themselves. And also, parents and school can provide opportunities for a, the student to role play what a meeting would look like, sound like, what components need to be in a meeting. How can a student-led meeting benefit the student? There's multiple skills that can be developed through leading their own um, 504 meetings. And that is, they can choose the mediums to communicate their progress. They can do graphics, pictures, drawings, homework. Um, assignments, writing, notes they've taken from class. Um, they can learn how to paraphrase technical jargon and language. It increases their reading and writing in context because they are encouraged to write some of their own accommodations um, goals so that they're ones that they feel comfortable with and know that they can, can be successful with. Students can prepare their 504 meetings with a presentation and use software and word processing as well. They learn how to introduce people and how to explain the purpose of the meeting. They also gives them the opportunity to think and plan for the future, learn how to goal set. They learn how to take turns and invite others to speak as well as listen and then respond with relevant and appropriate answers to the team that has gathered together in their behalf. They can learn to ask relevant and proactive questions. They learn to advocate for themselves by stating opinions and backing it with data. They learned presentation skills such as eye contact, the volume of their voice, tone, posture, and, and their own body language. They learn how to compromise and reach consensus and learn to propose compromise to so compromising solutions. They also learn how to close the meeting, summarize the decisions made, and express thanks to the 504 team. So what can a student do to prepare to lead a Section 504 meeting? Well, beyond working with the school to set up a plan and a script and some of those possible things, a student can create a vision for their own future. So do they want to attend a technical school or college? What career would they like to pursue? what would they like to do in their future life. Then write up a draft of their goals and then write transition goals to prepare them for going from um, high school to post-secondary. And then also determine what accommodations they need to be successful. And again then they would need the opportunity to role play those so that they are comfortable doing that. So what can the student do during the meeting then? They can start the meeting, they can introduce those in attendance, they can ask for data to be shared by those who can interpret it, share the data they have collected and their own progress that they've made, share the accommodations that have worked for them, and share what accommodations they need to continue or to modify for them to be successful. They can lead the discussion of transition plans for their future, 
And also at the end of the meeting, they can review where are we going, so where is the student going, um, what are we doing now, so what kinds of things, what's their present level of performance, what are their present goals, and then how can we get where we want to go to. So again, have the students state what they need to do to get to that primary goal. So what to do after the meeting's over? The student can review how they think the meeting went. They can do this with parents, they can do this with the 504 monitoring officer, they could do it with the team. So what, is, what went well? What do they think went well? What do they think didn't go so well? And what changes might need to be made for the next Section 504 meeting that they're going to lead? Um, just remember, this is a journey. Um, it can be started in small steps, maybe with the student just leading parts of the meeting in the very beginning, and then to, in their senior year, leading the whole meeting. This is a really important thing for students to do with 504 that want to go on to post-secondary. gives them the opportunity to learn how to speak and to advocate for themselves in a post-secondary setting at the Disability Center. Again, when a student goes to college, the Disability Center will be talking directly to the student, although you may be there, they will still address their questions to the student. So again, it's important that students can articulate what their disability is, what accommodations they need to be successful, and um, what other things they might need while they're at the college. So thank you again. I have the resources where I got this information from. They're based on student-led IEP meetings and adapted for 504 as um, the IDEA law and OCR sees that if we rise to the level of what students do in, with IEPs, then we've met that the level that we need to. So I've included those resources in the PowerPoint presentation. So if you want to read more about the a student-led IEP or Section 504 meeting, you can look at those. So again, my contact information is on the PowerPoint presentation. I hope that you have the opportunity to allow your student to begin to advocate for themselves so that they can be successful in doing so as they enter the post-secondary setting. Thank you.